we also, I especially think about, well, what if we didn't have all this tourism? What if we had not become a retirement community? What would Fredericksburg be? I went to Fredericksburg to learn about the unique Texan German culture. I was lucky enough to meet with the Texan German native. This is her story. Hey y'all, it's Kimberly and I'm here today with a special guest, Evelyn, and she's a Fredericksburg native and has a long line of German ancestry behind her. And she's gonna explain to us um, why Germans came here, the current German influence in Fredericksburg, and maybe even speak a little bit of German for us. <laughs> So I have to ask, do you have an American dialect when you speak German? Well, uh, probably. I have been told I do not have a Texas dialect. Okay. And that may come from the fact that I grew up speaking both German and English. Um, and I do catch myself throwing German and English words together when I'm speaking to someone in the native German. Very cool. I think that's really similar to the like Mexican and Spanish influence here because you hear people switch between English and Spanish, but it's with German. So right. that's cool. Very cool. So why exactly did Germans come to Fredericksburg to begin with? And when was this? This was back in the uh, mid 1800s. Actually, it started already 1820. There were some Germans who left over there because of the conditions and came to places like Industry or Columbus, Texas, and they were writing letters back to their families, but that didn't really create a huge um, immigration plan until after Texas gained its independence from Mexico. Texas was going to be the Republic of Texas beginning in 1836, but they needed people to settle this vast millions of acres and to help pay for the costs of the war, they sent word to European countries and in places like Germany that was not a unified country as we know it today, it was a group of kingdoms. This kind of sounded good, but they needed the uh, guidance of the Adelsverein. The Adelsverein actually, which is the uh, Society for the Protection of German Immigrants, had an idea of establish, establishing a German colony here in Texas. So they started putting uh, plans together with Texas. There were people here who started putting together land grants of as much as four million acres and advertising those to the Adelsverein. The Adelsverein told our ancestors that if they paid a registration fee, is what we would call it today, that they would get 320 acres, the trip on the ship to Galveston, uh, which was in those days called uh, Indianola. And then from there, they would get transportation because it's about a 300 mile trek from Galveston to New Braunfels and Fredericksburg, Texas today. So they would get transportation. Once they got here, they would build houses for them which would be the log cabins. And uh, they would also have some public buildings. Well, that is like many of our provinces. It didn't all happen that way. They did manage to get on the ships. The ships started leaving Germany, either from Bremen or Antwerp, Belgium, in about 1844, late 1844, all through 1845 all the way through till 1857 is when we have the last ships that docked at Galveston. Of course, they didn't come straight into Galveston. They came into what Prince Carl, who was the first count had come, called uh, Karlshaven, and then they'd get on smaller ships to come into the coast there. And once they got there, things had changed. Texas was no longer the Republic of Texas, February the 19th, I believe, was the final date for the Republic of Texas. It was now the state of Texas. The border between Texas and Mexico had still not been settled. So the United States was again in a war. And here were our ancestors looking for wagons. We have an ox cart here on the grounds that's very similar to what they would have traveled in and some other wagons too. 
that they would beg or whatever um, and buy from whomever they could until so that they could make the rest of their trip. The first one stopped in New Braunfels and founded New Braunfels in March of 1845. And then our founder, Utfried Hans von Moisebach, Baron Utfried, came. Once he got here, he was no longer Baron, and he was John O. Moisebach. He went to work trying to find money to put, keep, maybe save this whole cause so it wouldn't become a total lost cause and rode out to the original Fisher Miller land grant, which is actually located northeast of here at San Saba, Llano County, Castell in that area. And he said, oh, this, here's another surprise. This is deep where the Native Americans call home and they don't, are not ready to see people continue to take their land. So he went back to the governor, bought another 10,000 acres came back to this area we lovingly today call Fredericksburg, Texas, and divided our main street, what's now our main street, into town lots. And here on the grounds we have an example of a town lot, the Kamala House and Barn and Smokehouse is sitting on a town lot, which is 100 feet across by 200 feet deep. And then later the next year, they were given a 10 acre out lot that brought in the idea of the Sunday houses because once they moved out in the country to come back to church on Sundays was not something they could just accomplish Sunday morning. So they left Saturday morning with goods to trade and clothing and food for the weekend, went to church on Sunday morning and then went back to the farm. Wow. Now many people have asked us, well, whatever happened to that grant that your ancestors were supposed to have gotten, the 320, and we have been doing research and we're finding that later the Verein just because of the poor management totally dissolved and the governor and Moisebach worked it out to where if our ancestors could still verify, yes, I was an immigrant on one of those ships and yes, I was entitled to 320 acres, they could go to that area, lay claim to that land, either sell it or trade it for something else and came back here and purchased more property. Wow. So in probably about 10 years, it was finally a very good thing, but our, I just realized when I could, even when I went to Germany, went through the Bremerhaven there, what our ancestors must have given up and sacrificed to be able to do this. But it must have been really bad over there for them to want to do this. Right. And that's the true immigration story of America right, right there. Maybe more than you want to know. <laughs> Very awesome. That's really cool history background of how Fredericksburg became Fredericksburg. Um, and I'm really curious, how was it in your household growing up with the German influence and being in an American culture? Did you see a clash in that? Or how um, was that? I think I didn't realize how protected we were. Fredericksburg was isolated. We weren't as close to San Antonio and Austin as New Braunfels was. And so we were able to hold on to this culture for a lengthy time. Uh, we spoke German at home up until the World Wars when it became, for it was forbidden, as we would say, forbidden to speak German in public and at school, but also, uh, we did it a lot out of self-preservation. I've read stories of where during World War I, they quit uh, taking goods to San Antonio because people would see them and people would think suspect about them that, oh, those are some of those Germans. We had nothing to do it with it. We were Americans and our men and women went to fight in the wars when they were drafted, both World War I and World War II, but at the same time, we still had a very close-knit German community here. Right. We loved our Sangerfests and Schützenfests and our dance halls and our uh, saloons and beer and just like they did back in Germany. But uh, it has begun to change and definitely Fredericksburg is not the same today. Right. 
It stayed this way till I'd say maybe the 1950s, maybe for a hundred years or so. And then it's gradually with, with uh, the older generations uh, passing on and the younger generations not having that strong affiliation to the German, I think that's what has changed it. Right. Yeah, and that kind of leads into another question I had was, what is Germany's influence today in Fredericksburg? Is it non-existent or is it very existent? Because uh, the news article in the Hamburg um, news article, what was the headline? Um, I think it was, um, wo Texas noch Deutsch spricht. Yeah, ich glaube, das ist richtig. Uh, so where, where Texas still speaks German, basically. Yeah, so it's um, kind of, I think, maybe thought that Fredericksburg is still very much very Germanized. Is that true or is it I kind think, of dissipating? Uh, well, I think we still have festivals. We still have um, our county fair every August. And uh, when you go to the fair, you still, on occasion, find older family members visiting with their friends and speaking in German. It may not be a constant German conversation, but it's a good bit of it. Like, you know, they always want to know how much rain they had. Wie viel Rey hat es geregnet letzte Woche? Or, you know, they'll always ask each other questions like wow. that. We still have um, Schützenfest, which has been going on for over a hundred something years now. Every summer, they still have it on the weekend that's closest to full moon because their tradition was that they would shoot and then eat and then party and dance all night long. And they always had to do that when the moon was full so they could find their way home in the dark <laughs> without any kind of lights wow. on the wagons. Uh, we still have Singer Fest. Um, we have an October Fest now every October, but that was started by some of the people who had moved into Fredericksburg because Oktoberfest is not quite the Germany that our ancestors came from. It's more of a Bavarian tradition and we weren't, that wasn't quite our area. That's not to say we don't celebrate it and we still do and that's why that newspaper article was written because she was here for our Zweite Weihnachten. We do that here at the museum. Uh, more of our group that comes on that day are people who have recently emigrated from Germany to Fredericksburg like in the 1990s, early 2000s. We have uh, two ladies here who have both had import shops in Fredericksburg. We have the German bakery and some of those people or more recent immigrants didn't come over back in the 1840s when our ancestors did. So those are the kinds of things. Um, we don't have any German church services anymore. We do still teach um, German in the high school. We have been trying to start children's German language classes, but we, we can't quite seem to get that off the ground. Um, and I just thought of something else and now it just slipped my mind that we do that's still kind of in the German tradition. Very Maybe cool. I'll think of it again. Very cool. Um, and yeah, and I, I'm kind of curious too. So are Germans like today, like Max, for example, like younger Germans or mid-aged Germans, is, do they move to Fredericksburg? Is there a large population of Germans here in Fredericksburg, like from Germany? No, I am a retired teacher and I think we've had maybe a handful of students that we have to have language classes for because their parents uh, still speak German at home. And just a handful on that may be because of some type of job. I understand that Austin has a very strong population and they do very well with their German language classes for the children, as does San Antonio. But that's because uh, well, Austin being the capital of Texas and San Antonio being such an international city that a lot of people come to work there. As a tour director here at the museum, we had children come from a school in Houston one time to do the tour here on the grounds. And they had all of these um, foreign 
international people that work for the government, government employees, had those children going to school and they spoke all kinds of languages, not just German, but other languages too. Wow, very cool. And I wonder, like, are there any people in my generation that are still wanting to hold on to their Fredericksburg native past and learn the language, or is it just like, no, no, no interest? It's, it's no, not a whole wow. lot of interest. Uh, I am very surprised. My son is now living in New Braunfels, and all of a sudden, he is taking language, foreign language German classes. <laughs> and then he calls me every once in a while and tries to talk to me. He can, you know, a word here and there, it's when they have to start putting the sentences uh, together. I understand. I'm yeah. learning German right now, and that's how I am. It's like words, but sentences aren't forming. <laughs> yeah, very hard. Um, so is there anything that you like to say to my German viewers in German, maybe? <laughs> About Fredericksburg. When I Deutschland besucht habe, hat es mich sehr gefreut, dass ich uh, meine Vorfahren ihr Heim besuchen konnte. Does that make sense? <laughs> that makes sense. That was, awesome. good. That was excellent. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate it, especially in this hot house. And <laughs> on Memorial Day, too. On Memorial so Day. Thank well, you so much for explaining to my German subscribers what the history of Fredericksburg is and what it was like growing up in your house. Okay. Well, I get emails, phone calls, comments all the time. Oh, we saw you. On TV or something. Actually, I just brought a thank you card. No, 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 no. And I just so said why I brought it. Toffee yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> the best. Which oh. it's spelled differently oh. here. Oh, German candy is so good. It is so good. And Barbara brings it. Yeah, Sea Lecca. Yeah, Sea yeah. Lecca. Yeah, yeah. Sea Lecca. That I know. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I've enjoyed this, and I hope this is something you can use. Yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of people will like this and find it informative, especially me, because this was educational for me. I had been to Fredericksburg once before and um, didn't really get this perspective of it. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is our perspective. When I say our perspective, I'm talking about those of us who grew up here. But for the most part, the we have those of us who knew Fredericksburg, but at the same time, we also, I especially think about, well, what if we didn't have all this tourism? What if we had not become a retirement community? What would Fredericksburg be? Yeah. So we've got to look at both sides. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Okay. And ciao, tschüss, bis dann. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.